What's up, Nick fans? That's right. I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, again, a special guest from my channel, Jay Ellis from the Nick of Time Show. Welcome, my bro. What's going on, Victor? I'm glad to be back. Ah, bro, me too, me too. I like your channel. You know, you know, I talk with you yeah. so much about this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know what's up. I know. I know, Victor. You do good work, Victor. You do good work. We like each other's channels. Good stuff. Thank you, bro. I hope meet you in the future, bro. I hope. Yeah, I mean, you can New York. We, we can link up for sure. With it. I really want to go, bro. I really want to go. <laughs> Hi, bro. But first of all, uh, I want to talk with you in this interview about okay. New York Knicks, mm -hmm. uh, your expectations uh, with the Knicks in the next season, okay? Uh, first of all, I want uh, your opinion about uh, two new players in New okay. York Knicks, Jalen Brunson and mm -hmm. Isaiah Hartenstein. I want your opinion. What do you think about these guys in New York Knicks? Jalen Brunson is the steady point guard that the Knicks have been missing for a very long time. We haven't had someone this steady since uh, I mean, Jason Kidd. Um, he, he, I've only seen we've only seen two preseason games so far, and. One game where he's been shooting pretty well, and the other game where he wasn't shooting well. And in both games, he still had control of, of the team, whether he was shooting well or not. And to me, that's a, a really good sign of a, a true point guard. He likes to get to his spots. He like he's very dangerous for a guy who's only six feet. He gets to the paint. He gets in the teeth of the defense and he scores with ease. And then even if he doesn't, we have our own Mitchell Robinson right there for put back. So that helps us as well. And not only that, he he's collapsing the defense for us. And when he collapses the defense, we've been able to see RJ Barrett get his three point shots off very cleanly. And it looks like RJ has been working on that this season. He's been hitting it at a high clip. So, you know, Jalen Brunson has been, good for us. He's been very good for us. I've been very happy with him on the court. Defensively as well, I've liked what he's brought. Um, one on one defense, you've seen the first game he's playing defense on Kay Cunningham, a guy who's way taller than Jalen Brunson is, but he's a strong guy, strong base, wasn't able to take advantage of that. So I like his defense as well. I feel like his defense is a little bit underrated as far as a one on one defender. Team defense still needs to come along you know that's that might take some time coming to a new team and getting to know new teammates and getting to know two system but um overall he's been really well he's done really well for us and that's just on the court there's another part of this game that's the intangibles and that's the leadership the leadership that Jalen brunson is bringing to this team might be the most important thing that he's bringing to this team it's not it's not it's it's really good when your potential best player or the top player um, is also an important leader on the team. And you've heard interviews from Knicks players talking about how good of a leader he is. And that was after one preseason, preseason game. You've, you've, I've heard Quick say it. I've heard RJ Barrett say it. And so to me, um, it just seems like we 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 got one. We got one. We finally got one. <laughs> and I'm grateful that Jalen Brunson is a New York Nick. He I'm I'm can't wait to see what he does. And as far as Isaiah, yes. he gives us a different dimension that we haven't mm. had at the center position. For me, I want to see if he can put up the three-point shot at a higher clip, he only averaged 30 threes a game last season, even though he shot 47% from three. I want to see if he can do that at a higher clip. Um, but for, so far, so good. First game, he shot well. Second game, not so much. But I do still like his defense. Mm -hmm. I still do like his heart. 
Um, he's going to hustle. We know that. And I think once he gets used to playing with that second unit and they get used to playing with him, the Knicks can have one of the top benches in the league, top three, top two. I, I feel like that can be in our future. The, the bench is definitely going to be a strength for us with IQ and D-Rose and Grimes and whoever, OB Toppin. Come on. Like, our bench is going to be great. I, I'm really excited to see what these two guys have to bring to the New York Knicks this season. Mm. All right, bro. In, the, in, in Brazil, uh, another uh... – Another count, uh, another uh, channels joking with me. Uh, Jordan Branson, uh, Azaya Ewing with me, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, uh, Jalen Branson, it's a uh, Michael Jordan, it's a franchise no. player, it's a um, uh, PG from my dreams, but man. Uh, Knicks uh, need so much a uh, solid PG and uh, right. Jalen Brunson it's very very good bro I I, I, I like uh, this player this player can uh, can be so great from this team you you talk it in in, uh, uh, in begin and uh, I agree with you about uh, yeah. this guy and uh, yeah and Azaya Hartenstein uh, in my opinion it's great from this team because its player, this this player, um, has a uh, different skills uh, compared with J uh, Mitchell Robinson, um, Jericho Sings, and mm -hmm. Nerlens Noel. Uh, right. And and Nerlens Noel uh, salary uh, is uh, eight 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 millions, mm -hmm. and uh, Azaya come to the Knicks. Eight millions, right? Uh, so and he's, gonna be able to play. he's not going to be injured, so that's a plus. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the, in this guy can uh, can be open the floor, uh, drives for for Jalen Brunson, R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, uh, different skills, good passer, can shoot. He got, this right. guy can shoot a center in Knicks. Shoot. I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared. <laughs> I, but, man, one of the things I was worried about, about J when Jalen Brunson got here was the spacing. Because yes. When Jalen Brunson was with the Dallas Mavericks, mm -hmm. um, he really took advantage of the spacing they had. They had stretch four, stretch fives. So Jalen Brunson was able to go in the paint and do what he wanted at will. And we didn't really have that with our centers. Now, so far in the preseason, even with the lack of spacing, he's still mm -hmm. kind of been able to cook, which is a good sign. But what I like about the Isaiah Hartenstein signing is, at points, if he has it going, I can see Isaiah in lineups with the starting unit, and then Jalen Brunson having so much more room to do what he does because Isaiah is out there in a three-point line stretching the floor for our, for our guys. So, it, again, like it's very sneakily – good signings by these New York Knicks and they knew what they were doing because right <laughs> right when uh <laughs> right when the draft happened they got rid of their they got rid of their guys and they went straight after Jalen Brunson and Isaiah straight away. Mm -hmm. So I mean Knicks did their homework and they did a pretty good job in the offseason. Yes and I, I like so much uh energy energy from Jalen Brunson. Uh it's a uh, uh this guy uh enter uh with uh, in these games uh uh a shock <laughs> like yeah. a shock in yeah. your body yes i like i like this i like mm -hmm. this i like this he's because made for the garden he's not scared either yeah <laughs> yes for the garden bro uh because that this uh, I like uh, see in the season, Kenton Grimes play with Jalen Brunson. Okay, yeah. uh, I want your opinion about this. Uh, for example, uh, I make uh, in, in Nick Fans Brazil the question: uh, People prefer uh, Kenton Grimes or uh, Evan Fournier starter? Yeah. Starter uh, with the Knicks. Uh, in my opinion, I prefer 
uh, Quentin Grimes, ok? Uhum. Uh, I hear, for example, from Mark Berman in this channel, I don't agree, but I like uh, your opinion uh, from my, Mark Berman, because Mark Berman comment, commented with me, um, the, the second unit uh, from the Knicks, it's a, a fast, uh, fast players. Right. Uh, uh, on fire in these games, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Evan Fournier, it's more slow compare comparative with Kikley right. and uh, Obi Taupin. Uh, but yet, for me, I prefer see Kenton Grimes with Jalen Brunson, uh, Kenton Grimes uh, in your defense, and yeah, he can yeah. shoot, he can shoot three too. Okay. I agree. And uh, Fournier, uh, from the bench, uh, can be put fire uh, with your three points in these games. But my opinion, okay? I want your opinion, Jay Ellis. Um, what do you think about uh, this question? Kenton Grimes versus <laughs> Evan Fournier? My opinion is, in my perfect world, it will be Quentin Grimes starting and Cam Reddish backing him up. That would be my perfect that's just me but either way i would prefer quitting grime starting um if you ever watched the kot show i've been calling for quentin grimes to start since last season in november oh, december <laughs> yeah november i watched it i watched on the han talk about i was the first gun to say grimes now it's documented on the kot show i do post games i was talking about starting quitting grimes since last <laughs> season all right because, <laughs> yes, I was not joking. Because, as my my buddy Raw Hebrew Remnant likes to say, all right, it's, it's, it is what it is. Evan Fournier is a turnstile. He's a cone on defense. So, yes. if you have Grimes, who is a stout defender, um, next to Jalen Brunson, it's going to help out Jalen Brunson tremendously with our team defense. And on top of that, you don't really lose that much from on the three point end from Quentin Grimes. Quentin Grimes averaged about eight threes a game in college and hit it at a 40% clip. He came to the New York Knicks and he still kind of shoots at a high clip. I do believe if given a time, he would give us the same production. And on but on top of that, he will also have the defense. And on top of that, he doesn't need the ball. He got he got. Randall who, the, who needs the ball. We got RJ who needs the ball. We got Jalen Brunson needs the ball. Having a guy who is a defender takes pride on that side mm -hmm. of the ball and can also shoot the three ball at a high clip and he doesn't need the ball and he's still going to give you defense, whether he touches the ball or not, is the ideal player for the starting unit. You even heard Evan Fournier himself say it in the post game. He was like, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know what to do because I, uh, uh, I wasn't shooting well. It was affecting my defense. Uh, like, I saw. I saw. <laughs> I saw this interview. So, like, you already know. You already the the him not touching the ball and not knowing where he gets his shots. It could affect his defense. It's not affecting Quentin Grimes because that's what Quentin Grimes does. Quentin Grimes posted a video on Instagram of him practicing fighting over screens. Like, who does that? Everybody posts videos on Instagram doing dunks and threes. Quentin Grimes is out here posting videos of defensive slides and fighting over screens. I love me some Quentin Grimes. Start that man over Evan Fournier. And really, I would like, I would like Cam Reddish to go behind him. And mm -hmm. um, but you know, that's a whole other story. I don't even hopefully Cam gets the shot to to produce for the Knicks. Uh Evan Fournier, uh I talk it the uh, last days with uh, Ron from Stilnik fans. Right. Ron, I need to buy a glass from Evan Fournier. See, in all games, Boston Celtics. Evan. Yes, yes. Evan. Yes. You, <laughs> you play. Paint everything green. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Evan Fournier, MVP from NBA. See all the games, Boston Celtics. But... Yeah, we we're just gonna give him some goggles with Celtics logos on it, so he thinks everybody's a Celtic. 
You know, you know the little Kareem Abdul with goggles. You just, you just put them, put those on him, paint them green, put little logos, Celtic logos, and he'll think everybody's a Celtic. I think that's that's a great idea. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> And, and I want your opinion. I, uh, we talked né, about uh, Jalen Brunson, okay? In your opinion, uh, in the last interview, we, t- we, we talked about the player, po- polemical player, Julius Randle. Right. Okay? Do you remember? Uh, in your opinion, <laughs> uh, Jalen Brunson uh, can be uh, help. Uh, Julius Randle, Julius Randle can be play uh, better in the next season playing uh, with Jalen Brunson, in your opinion? Yeah, Jalen Brunson um, so far has made the game easier for everybody. He set up the table for RJ Barrett, and it looks like he's doing the same for Julius Randle. Now, for me, Randle sometimes I still feel like he lacks true basketball instincts. He kind of goes off his athleticism a lot. So he, to me, he still has problems thinking the game. Like um, the first, the first preseason game, he still does this thing where he pass, he'll pass up an open shot to like, to take a contested jumper. He, he Sometimes he passes when he shoots and shoots when he's supposed to pass. So I still feel like he has to get used to that. But listen, Jalen Brunson is going to set the table for you. I think the more he starts to play with him, I'm hoping the more he will just let the game come to him and kind of just think less, you know, open shoot it, not open pass it. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Mm-hmm. And yes. as long as he does that, I, I'm fine. Now, you know, the Knicks play – who did they play? They play what team? They played the, the, the Pacers the other game. Like, first, first few quarters, Julius, I loved. Third quarter, Julius, he seems like he was going off the rails a little bit. He was doing a little bit too much. So, like, I want to see if he can stay consistent in his shot selections. Um, Mm -hmm. Hopefully, he will stay consistent and and not shoot too much, you know. Let Brunson Mm -hmm. control the game. And then you just shoot off the move and shoot when you're open. Yes. Uh, I don't lie uh, for you. Uh, I am disappointed uh, with Jalen uh, J- uh, Julius Randle in the last uh, season. But, man, I love New York Knicks, bro. I love New York Knicks. Right. So, Julius Randle, play well. Play well. For me, it's good. Play well. I will happy this. So, me too. for me, man, don't, 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 no, Knicks don't trade it, uh, Julius Randle. Julius Randle is staying in the Knicks. I just uh, hope Julius Randle will play better. For me, New York Knicks uh, will be better with this. So? Listen, listen. <laughs> I'm, I'm for anybody in a blue and orange uniform. If Julius Randle plays well and gets his attitude corrected, um, I'm with him. He'll be a New York Knicks. Then so be. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. But I, but I also like Obi Top, and I still want to see Obi Top mm-hmm. get some burn, and I want to see if the coach will actually give him the real opportunity he deserves. I don't need yes the coach benching Obi just because Randall has come back in the game. I want him mm-hmm. to ride the hot streak of Obi just like he rides the hot streak of Randall. So hopefully this season we start to see more balance on how the coach handles yes. those guys' minutes and let it more be merit based. This year, when it comes to Randall and Obi Toppin, and uh, so far Obi, he's 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 done well. Uh, it looks like he's gotten better defensively. Last game, he shot a couple of threes. Hopefully, that momentum and confidence will propel him into the next few games and the season as well. Your man. dunk, your dunk. Oh, the dunk was hurt. <laughs> <laughs> the dunk, the dunk. Oh, I was talking about sound effects. <laughs> the dunk is crazy. The dunk, <laughs> the face. From Emmanuel Kikley. Yeah, the, the yeah. <laughs> it's Emmanuel amazing, bro. It's amazing. It's amazing. I and hope it's the same dunk every hope. time. It's the same yes. dunk every time, and it's amazing every single time. I'm never getting tired of it. <laughs> Obi, close your eyes uh, with a pass ball uh, uh, with uh, with your legs. Uh, mm-hmm. He closed now. I, I saw a post uh, in Twitter uh, oh, I talking saw that. about this. 
I saw that. Uh, I saw that. <laughs> I think cool, bro. I think cool. Uh, this guy, this guy deserve, bro. The guy deserve uh, a more minutes, more chance in this team. Uh, from Nick fans, uh, see more about this player. See, uh, see uh, if this guy, uh, it's a, a great player or not, because uh, Nick fans like so much Obi Topping. I like so much Obi Topping. Uh, but this guy needs nah, more more chance, more minutes. I don't want um, uh, Randall uh, more uh, 28 minutes uh, in this team, bro. I want see more Obi yeah, Topping. I agree. Perfect world. I mean, I in a perfect world. Like, if Randall gets 28 and then Obi gets the rest, I would be cool with it. Um, Cause I don't really expect that that much anyway, but that that would be a far cry from what he was getting last season. Last mm -hmm. season he was getting I think it said 17 minutes, but the 17 minutes to me was still like fake 17. He was getting more like 11 minutes, and then Randall didn't play for a while, so it raised a little bit because Randall was just sitting. So I I want him to get more closer to to like 18 to 20 for Obi Top, and I would love I would love that. I would really <laughs> very much love that. Brazil loves Obi Topping. Nick fans in Brazil loves this guy, bro. <laughs> as they as they should. As New York New York fans love Obi Topping as well. If you did yes. <laughs> well, who does not love Obi Topping? Everybody loves Obi, man. Obi. It's, it's uh, hard bro. not to love that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in the in the last interview, uh, R.J. Barrett don't have a extension, extension right, later right. from mm -hmm. from the last interview. I want your opinion about uh, R.J. Barrett extension. What do you think about this? I think it was I think it was a fair number. Uh, I don't really the number off the top of my head. I think it was around thirty thousand or so, and it incrementally goes up. But it wasn't the max. I didn't think he was going to get the max anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was a fair number for him. It was a fair number for the franchise. And I like, and RJ kind of just seems cool. With it. He's just like, he made a comment about how he doesn't pocket watch. He just plays the game. Um, so I, I really admire the way RJ just approaches business in general, basketball business and the, just the business business of this game. I, I like mm -hmm. I like the number. I think it's a fair number. And also the contract, if he plays well, if he starts to make the all-star game and all uh makes the all-defensive team, he'll get some bonuses. So mm -hmm. um that'll give him more motivation. Not like he didn't need motivation already, because RJ stays motivated, but um it'll be it'll be a nice little extra bonus for him if he does that. And I, I just love RJ's no nonsense attitude. And I'm I'm just happy that he was able to break the the Charlie Ward curse. And I, I know some people said Mitch Robinson broke it, but RJ Barrett is our like top three pick, and not the second round. They're a pick, so I I mm -hmm. feel like RJ broke the curse. So I'm happy that RJ Barrett is the one to break the Charlie Ward curse. And the Charlie Ward curse is you know he drafted Charlie Charlie Ward. He was the first person that we resigned after he's been drafted. Uh, I mean, the last person, the mm -hmm. last uh, first round pick that we, we signed after he's been drafted. So um, I'm happy. I'm very happy to have RJ back in the middle one. Uh, you know, everybody knows, man. I I love RJ Barrett. This channel, everybody, all the guests, all guests, mm -hmm. uh, I I make it with you, with uh, another guest. Uh, do you do you think RJ Barrett it's a future all star? Because man, <laughs> I really I really uh, believe in this player. Okay, I really believe. I like so much uh, yeah. RJ Barrett. It's a younger player, but I I love he uh, uh, is maturity maturity yeah. from from your age in my opinion. And I like this. I like this. And I believe uh, year year. Uh, late another year, RJ mm -hmm. Barrett will be better. I really believe it, bro. And I um, I, I really happy about uh, your extension. And um, so I want your opinion too about uh, younger players because okay. 
de, de Tom Timberdall, New Style, Beard, Like, like <risos> Us, Like Us, like More us. Hair, More hum. Hair. Like <risos> us. <Nice>. Nossa, <risos> <laughs> so new style, né? From Tom Timberdall. Right. It's that the the New York Knicks too. So uh, I want your opinion uh, from uh, younger players uh, from this team. Uh, what do you think about uh, Ken Reg? I really uh, uh, worry about Ken Reg because I like this guy. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Emmanuel Kikley, uh, Deuce McBride. And uh, so many younger players. What do you think about uh, this team? Do you think uh, these these guys will be uh, more chance in this team? Can Reg, for example, uh, right. what do you think about this? Um, Quentin Grimes, and Mayo quickly, they're fine. They're going to yes. be. I'm not worried about them at all. Man quickly led the league, led our team in four quarter minutes last year. Quentin Grimes is one of Tom Dickel's favorites. Quentin Grimes, to me, he's going to threaten to start at the, the two guard for New York Knicks, probably by all star break if anything. So I'm not worried about those guys. Cam Reddish, however, I am worried about Cam Reddish because of the wing depth that we have on this team. I'm not sure where he'll get his opportunities from. Um, I keep saying Grimes to me defends better than Cam Reddish um, only because of his motor is more proven than Cam's. So I need Cam Reddish to improve his motor on defense. And also, you know, Evan Fournier, as of right now, he shoots better than Cam. So for, for me, for Cam to really crack this rotation, he has to A, concentrate on the defensive end of the ball because Evan Fournier cannot compete with you on that side of the ball if you're giving – giving it 100% every single time. Like, he just can't just because you're six eight with a seven-foot wingspan. So you should mm -hmm. be able to blow him out the water when it comes to defense. And I also want you just I, – and I just need him to concentrate and shoot me those threes as well. Like, I just need mm -hmm. him to be a three and D guy and then get to the rim like you can because that's your strength. And then everything else will take care of itself. But um, he has to show. He has to fight. He has mm -hmm. to fight. And you know what? Normally, players in their contract years, that's what they do. They fight. They, they, they usually try the hardest in the contract year. This is, this is Cam Reddish's contract year, so I do expect him to put up a fight in training camp. And hopefully he gets tips, uh, tips attention. You know what I mean? So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm hopefully he cracks through, but it's going to be, it's going to be a dog fight because Evan Fournier is no slouch. You know, yes. Evan Fournier yes. is no slouch. As much as me, like, oh, move him to the side. Like, he still broke John Stark's three-point shooting record last year. And he's still yes. a very capable NBA player. So, um, Cam Reddish, he has a shot to do something, but he is going to be a little bit of an uphill battle for him. But he needs to show the coach something. Right. But but I I think, in my opinion, okay, the Knicks uh, in the in the season – will be uh, uh, search a chance uh, trade Evan Fournier uh, uh, in the the final season because Knicks uh, uh, the salary cap it's it's complicated with right. uh, Evan Fournier uh, in my opinion uh, in the the final uh, in the, the final season. I, I believe Knicks uh, will betray uh, this guy, bro. I, I believe. It's complicated because uh, Evan Fournier needs play better. <laughs> uh, another teams uh, want this guy. Right. Evan Fournier needs play better. Okay? Right. And uh, all Knicks fans, Evan Fournier sucks. Evan Fournier, I don't like he, it. He doesn't suck. He doesn't <laughs> I mean, for you, he's a good NBA player. He is. Yes, he's just yes, not, yes. He's just, I agree. You know, he's just not gifted defensively. But, yes, uh, I agree. I agree. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, so many Knicks fans are uh, talking so uh, uh, bad things about this guy. Uh, uh, another teams are uh, hearing about this. Uh, it's complicated, bro. 
ah, I, I will, I bring this guy, or oh, all the, the, the fan base don't like, it's complicated, bro, it's, it's complicated. I, I really hope uh, Nick's uh, in the, in the, the uh, future, uh, uh, trade this guy. I, 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 I like Evan Fournier, uh, like I said, uh, from the bench because it's very good in three points, it's very yeah. good. But here is the problem here, yeah. uh, the price, bro. The price mm. is it's, it's high, it's high the price, but yeah. it's a good player, but. Yeah, it's do, like, do, do understand? Do understand right. my point? Yeah, I understand your point. And like the Knicks have have are going to have decisions to make. You know, mm -hmm. we still have to at some point resign Ob, resign, mm -hmm. sign Ob, resign Emmanuel quickly, uh, and maybe Cam. So yes, we're going to have not, and we're not probably not going to be able to keep everybody. But at the same time if we're able to move a contract that's costing around 18.5 million dollars it'll be easier to keep more of these guys so mm -hmm. we have to figure that out and like you said we have like a team option for 2024 2025 so he's he's pretty much an expiring contract after this season so i expect him to possibly be on a move next season whether it be mm -hmm. next summer or next trade deadline, I, I expect the Knicks to be able to move him probably then. Um, as of now, it might not be as hard, as easy to move him unless like a a team wants to add him to the to uh, their championship run. Maybe the Lakers um, can't get Buddy healed, and they look at him for and go, "Hey, he's a shooter," and they're not mm -hmm. trying to give us healed, so let's take him. Maybe something like that happens, but. Uh yeah, like right now he's here to he's here to stay, and guys like Grimes and Cam's are gonna have to beat him for his minutes. Yes, in the and what do you think about Derrick Rose, bro? Because Derrick Rose, uh, you're healthy. It's good. Yeah, you're healthy. Uh, Derrick Rose, uh, can be so so useful from this team. Uh, your experience, your skills. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Derrick Rose with the Man. Knicks? It's it's crazy because I love me Derrick Rose. I love me some Derrick Rose. He's gotten back down to his playing weight from when he's a rookie, and you can see the confidence beaming. He's he's doing interviews with his shirt off. All right, so you I tell you uh -huh. how confident this man is. But the, but it's, it's it's one of those things where it's the off the court stuff is why I really love Derrick. Mm -hmm. um because we need leadership on his team and he, he said himself he's taking more ownership of being more vocal he's obviously seen the debacle that happened last season with julius randall slapping laptops and thumbs down all this other stuff so yes he, he he wants to be more vocal he made that statement in his press conferences and that's why i think he's going to be a huge asset for the team and also he's been one of the best uh closers for us in close games so i can I, I can fully expect seeing like closing lineups with Jalen Brunson and Derrick Rose together. I can definitely see that happen. Um, mm -hmm. And I also can see, you know, him helping us if we ever, if we made the playoffs this year. Um, so I, I love, I love Derrick Rose here, man. I'm, I'm a little oh, bit conflicted. I'm a little, I'm a little bit conflicted though, because <laughs> we're, we're, as much as I love him, I also want to see some of the younger guys take the next step. So this I is understand. the player that, I'm the most conflicted about because yes. we can still use him to win. And I love his influence in the locker room and his leadership. But I also want to see Grimes and Deuce and Cam get some minutes. So it's, I, it, 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 this Derrick Rose kind of pulls at me a little bit because of that. But lo I love the guy. Uh, bro, but but uh, uh, Derrick Rose help na, developing the these guys, uh, new, younger players. Do you remember uh, Emmanuel Kikley and Obi Taupin in the season uh, pandemic, uh, pandemic season uh, 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 when Derrick Rose uh, coming to the Knicks, uh, the second unit, uh, yeah. this team. Oh. Shut up! Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! And uh, 
I really, I really hope that Dark Rose play more, better, uh, your health, uh, etc., and uh, help more uh, with your experience. Uh, mm -hmm. These guys, uh, I love Dark Rose too, bro, and yeah. I understand your point. I really, really understand your point. But now nah, uh, you make it. I make it to uh, interview uh with uh Jan Bagley okay um Jan Bagley talk uh something I I then I won't talk with you okay, okay. uh I ask for for Jan Bagley about uh the expectations now nah, with this thing mm -hmm. and uh, Jan Bagley comments uh about uh it's uh more um I forgot this word bro uh nicks don't have uh so much um expectations high high right, right. expectation with this team right. then uh it's a a good point from this team because uh, so many uh, uh pressure at the pressure it's uh yeah they can play freely and they can probably overachieve because they don't have the pressure and high expectations yes, I, that they had last season Yes. yes i think i think he i think he can be interested from these guys because younger players hungry hungry players uh depression it's uh is low uh mm -hmm. compared with the last season the last season this team uh has a uh, had a uh, high yeah. expectation yeah. Uh, in the in the last season and the young bagley talked uh about this what do you think about this? About the expectations and what? How many wins uh, are you gonna get this year? Uh, uh, and yeah. uh, I want your opinion, uh, too, no? Be, uh, Okay. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, he's correct. We we don't have high expectations this season. Yes. So that's pretty. That's pretty good for us. So I think we we'll go under the radar for a lot of people, but I also just think that we're just a better team. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think more yes. than the expectations expectations aside we're a better team we we, we jalen brunson took apart the utah jazz he dismantled the, mm -hmm. he single-handedly dismantled the utah jazz and now that guy yes. is on our team so i i do agree about the low expectations but that guy on our team mm -hmm. changes the complexity of our game plan it takes the ball out of julius Randle's hands it makes our offense more stable and we also have a defensive coach in tom Thibodeau who's going to help us on that side of ball so overall We'll just be a better team. So, and that's what I'm looking for. So, like, like he, I don't know, Jalen. He feels like one of those guys where he, where, where there's not gonna be a fear. You know, there's gonna be a when things get tight. I feel like he might he'll be able to perform, and we're gonna have a guy like that, and then we're gonna have like a guy like Dan Rose off the bench giving us that as well. So, I think we're just in a better position to compete in general. So that's to, for me. That's bigger than anything, even bigger than yes. the being, you know, under the radar. You know? mm -hmm. I, 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 I. So I, I think uh, this team uh, has more chance in the in the next season uh, playing and mm -hmm. uh, got it uh, playoffs. In my opinion, this team can be a chance, uh, but uh, this team can be. Surprise me, and you, and all, everybody, because uh, do you remember? Do you remember in the pandemic season, uh, nobody, nobody believed in this team in playoffs. No, four, four seed, bro, four seed. Yeah, four seed was crazy. Four seed was nuts. You're right. You're right. Alfred Payton, bro. Alfred Payton. Yeah. Point Alfred Payton. Yeah. Julius Randle was playing out of his mind. <laughs> Julius Randle was playing out of his cotton picking mind. Julius Randle was just on the <laughs> uh, bro. Uh, so I, I, I want uh, a six, né? a six seed, but I believe uh, eight or nine, 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 né? seed. But right. see, I, I, I won't be surprised in the in the next season. Uh, I like so much uh, this team with Jalen Brunson uh because uh nobody 
uh, believe so much in NICS. You know, right? United States, in Brazil, and other countries. Mm -hmm. But uh, I I like this team. Uh, this team is not the worst, the worst team. It's not a, the 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 best team in this league. But it's a good team, bro. You talk so much about the the second unit. Mm -hmm. I like so much the second unit. And uh, in the first unit, I like Jalen Brunson, RJ Barrett, you know, <laughs> right. uh, Mitchell Robinson, Knicks fans uh, like so much this guy, Julius Randle, uh, <laughs> uh, play better. It's right. very good for <laughs> us. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, Kenton Grimes or Evan Fournier. Uh, no? So I, I believe uh, in playoffs with playing. Okay, uh, I want your opinion because I I, I, I believe I I forgot uh, <laughs> say uh, 41, uh, four, 41. Uh, 41. Mm -hmm. 41 victories 41 losers uh, in right, the, right. the next season. Right. What have, do I, you believe? I have I have it. I'm in the neighborhood. I have 42 in my brain. I have 42. Um, <laughs> like Trataros. Yeah, Trataros say the same. Uh, yeah. bro. I, I, I hope more. I hope more. Me I hope too. More. I hope way more. But <laughs> like, I, I wrote this down too, right? Because we have the, the Bucks are a championship team. They won. Mm -hmm. right? They're crazy. Yes. The Celtics went to the finals last year, even though their coach went down. So I'm kind mm -hmm. of wondering how that's going to affect them. Then it's the yes. 76ers. They added, they added like uh Miami. Yeah, Miami. Yep. That 76ers added the, the powerful word from Miami. I forgot his name. I hate Miami, bro. Oh, yeah. Since Pat Riley yeah, go out yeah. from the Knicks, yeah. I hate Miami Heat, bro. Yeah. I feel you. <laughs> I hate Brooklyn more though, but <laughs> Brooklyn, Brooklyn, I, I in Ch uh, in Brazil, I I I participate um, from uh, a life. I, I I make a curse from yeah. Brooklyn, <laughs> Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. Uh, never be, never be a giant in New York City. Never, never. I make never a curse. Ever. And I'm from Brooklyn, and I don't like the team. Like I live in Brooklyn, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm just like. Ah. No, bro. <laughs> I, don't, I don't claim y'all. The hell? Like, <laughs> but but, yeah. but so but has so many Knicks fans in in Brooklyn or are oh, yeah. not? There's a lot of Knicks fans in Brooklyn because there was no team. No, in no. Brooklyn, but it's Brooklyn Nets. It's a uh, heavy. Uh, so many uh, Brooklyn uh, Brooklyn fans in Brooklyn or more Knicks in in Brooklyn. It's a Knicks town in Brooklyn. It's it's a Knicks town. Like here's the thing. The Knicks have yes. a legacy, right? Okay, so here's the thing: you're like, you're not from America, you're not from New York, so you don't know. Yeah, Brooklyn is inside of New York. New York is a state. Mm -hmm. Brooklyn yes. is a city in New York. So, like, you know, I grew up. I'm living. I've been living in Brooklyn, Long Island, in Brooklyn, and I've always been a Knicks fan because we didn't have a team when I was young. There was no Brooklyn team when I was younger. So we all mm -hmm. grew up. A lot of us grew up Knicks fans. So when Brooklyn came a few late years later, it's like, and they have the Nets jersey. So to, to me, that's more of like a jersey thing. That's like a whole nother portion. They just took that team and just made it something else. So I never really saw them as a Brooklyn team. I just saw them as some yes. other team that they took. You know what I mean? So, uh, so I'm a Knicks. So a lot of Knicks fans are still Knicks fans. Now, Kevin Durant and those guys, they went to the playoffs, so I know their fan base grew a little bit. But I feel I still think that we outnumber the Brooklyn fans in New York. In this, this team in Brooklyn Nets, uh, trying can be an uh, image. This team with uh, the Brooklyn, with uh, uh, the image of the, the, the Brooklyn with mm -hmm. the Nets. Uh, I, 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 I think uh, I see uh, so far away uh, people in, in, in New York um, don't buy this idea from the Nets trying um, 
uh, close uh, your team with the Brooklyn image from the Brooklyn with uh -huh. the Nets. I I don't I don't see this because uh -huh. I, I I know so much uh, more Nick fans in Brooklyn right. than than Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, we, we everywhere, man. Like we we, we everywhere. You're not gonna get rid of us. <laughs> Oh, we, um, Brooklyn Nets. Boo, oh. boo. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. Boo. No, we, no, we, uh, never, be. Never, we never be. Never be. Never. 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 Sorry. Never. Just the, the just the message for you guys. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Jay. Bro, really, uh, I love making interviews with you. <laughs> serious, serious. Uh, Appreciate it, I like, bro, because uh, I talk with you uh, uh, about serious subjects, mm -hmm. but uh, with a, a little funny comments. I like this. I like this. Yeah, I, I like this do that that's my, that's my <laughs> i don't like to be serious too long like it makes me like i don't know it's not my thing i like to throw in a joke every now and again there's a I'm lot joking. of serious guys with, with this and now he has 24 points three rebounds and six assists and here's my analytics and boring boring i was like i do not like this. a robot a yeah. robot <laughs> this is sports this is sports it's supposed to be fun like this is not... yes no i'm joking I joke yeah, it with yeah. um, I joke it with uh, Alan Hur, uh, and, and in the in the, I, my interview with him uh, and uh, Donovan Mitchell. Uh, I don't I don't want to talk about this, okay? But uh, <laughs> I, I joke. <laughs> but I joke with Alan Hur, uh, right. in this interview, uh, Alan. Uh, do you believe uh, Spider-Man 4 coming to the next? <laughs> bro, bro, Alan Hur buy the, the, this idea and uh, we make uh, funny comments about it. Right, that. right, right. I like, I like uh, th this. Uh, you I... comment now. Uh, uh, like a robot, I don't like, I don't like this. And... I like making interview with you. The last interview, my Wi-Fi don't help. People don't see. Oh, oh, uh, chat, bro! It's so funny. It's so yeah. great. Great Man, questions. I'm sorry, yo, guys. <laughs> Victor interviewed me last time, and I'm not gonna lie. It was probably the best like <laughs> interview that I've gotten from one on one from somebody. And the Wi-Fi messed up. And I'm telling you, that interview was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> that interview was so your funny. Your face, your face, ever. your face. You try and understand my my voice. <laughs> oh man, uh, I was having a hard. I, I figured it out though. I figured it out. I figured it out. I'll catch it on. No, it's cool. It's cool interview. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> work well. Work well, bro. Thank you so much. I hope, I hope uh, uh, you coming coming soon in this channel again because yeah, I re I really I really really like talk with you, bro. <laughs> no problem, I, man. No problem. <laughs> no problem, man. I'll be back. So long yes, long. yes. <laughs> and <laughs> and the Knicks, nah. Uh, uh, we hope a better season, eh, bro. Knicks, Absolutely. Knicks deserve New York City and Knicks fans around the world deserves a great team bro deserves. absolutely absolutely we need to get a win this season we need to get wins this season we need to make the playoffs this season and we need to bring the new york knicks back to respectability hopefully that's what we get this season let's go next want... i want playoffs bro i want to i want the playoffs too man <laughs> i want it thank you bro and uh i talk with you in the future bro okay all right yo. Later, peace Victor. bro Peace. Ok, go Nix. <risos> Queria comentar com vocês, né? Nós temos agora uma novidade aqui com relação ao Nix Fans Brasil, que o canal agora pode ter o programa de membros, né? No YouTube. Então eu gostaria de pedir para você, você que puder, se inscreva também, né? Seja membro, seja membro do Nix Fans Brasil. Apenas 7,99 por mês. Apenas 7,99. E você vai ter vantagens 
exclusivas, vantagens exclusivas por ser membro do canal Nick Fans Brasil. Uma delas, você vai ter grupo especial no WhatsApp, que você vai ter as notícias sempre antes, né? Vídeos e etc. sempre ditos antes para os membros. Uh, benefícios que vão ser estudados ao longo do tempo, que vão ser exclusivos para vocês. Além de sorteios, galera. Quem for membro vai ter essa vantagem, galera. Então, bora lá, participa e apoia o canal Nick Fez Brasil, pessoal. Beleza? E aí, pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! I do, are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick fan. Oh.